Hi there, so this is um, the second part of a two-part part tutorial series and this is a tutorial to show you how, how to use the PII viewer for Google Analytics Chrome extension. Now, first of all I'd like to just point out sending personally identifiable information to Google Analytics is strictly prohibited but sending a unique user ID is permitted. And this tutorial will aid users of PII Viewer for Google Analytics Chrome extension and the extension allows you to map a user ID stored within Google Analytics to PII such as name or email address stored locally. Now the test scenario that we set up previously is that we're using a pseudo randomly generated user ID to um, that's assigned to each web page visitor. And the user ID feature in Google Analytics is currently being rolled out. So in the meantime, we're mapping it to a custom dimension within which we're storing our own custom user ID. So on my local, local file system, I've created a, a set of sample personas in a sample.psv. Now conveniently within the um, within the Chrome extension, I've actually added it so that you can download it. So this is the Chrome extension and here's the sample user data. So if I just go in and take a look at that, you can see the we have a header row with user ID, display name, email address, company and country, and then common separated values here. Now please note that this data is sample data and it's not real customer data. Um, so in the PII viewer for Google Analytics, we upload the CSV into the extension. Now the extension is installed locally and it saves the data to the local machine in Chrome's chrome.storage.local API. Now the point I'm making here is that the PII data is not uploaded anywhere outside of your, your, local your local machine. This means that your PII data is as safe as it would have been on this machine already. It also means that legally you comply with Section 7 of Google Analytics Terms of Service. So, having said all that, we go back to the Chrome extension and we're going to, um, we're going to load some user data from the file. So, here's the file open it up, load it in, and it says here, select Google Analytics user identifier column. So we're going to use the user ID, which is, you know, these A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, X, Y, Z kind of, num kind of things. So we've saved that, and we can also view the data, so we can have a look and have a look through it. And, and see formative things. So that's good. Um, and previously we spoke about setting up the user ID within our within the tracking. So if we just go back over here to our, our example website, you can see that the user ID sent on this particular occasion is GHI123RST. So we can have a quick search and see who that is. So this is our fictitious user Barbara, Barbara Ross and she comes from the Gambia. Um, so the next thing that we want to do now is to to go and have a look at Google Analytics. So conveniently we can jump straight back to where we were in Google Analytics by clicking that link and you see down at the bottom we have this little little toolbar that we can show or hide and it says that it's on and it says display mapping so if we look at this drop down we see display name email company and country just like we did if we go back and have a look over here it's this data here so dropping back to google analytics we're going to have a look. We can see here that we've previously we've already set up 
country territory and custom user ID. I mean, we can go in and look at some of the things. So, for example, have a look at all pages in the site content and then add the custom user ID. So, we haven't got any display mapping switched on yet. So, let's show the display name. And there we are. So, now we can see that Elizabeth Gilbert over here from, um, let's see where she's from. Elizabeth Gilbert is from Bulgaria. And we can have a look at her email address. Her email address is egilbert at canoodle.mil. Um, and you can you can see what's been happening. You can see which pages these people have been looking at, and we can we can just pop back and have a look at the the information again. And you can see there we are that they all map that all maps together. So as the extension maps any dimension in the report it could lead to some false positives. So I've also added this little toggle here which switches switches the data off and um, you can switch it back on again of course and within future releases we're considering injecting mapping into different places within the Google Analytics interface for, exa for example within the behavior flow and, and other places but for the time being this is what you get.